Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're just making a quick little project that kind of has to do with my Elsa project. I need to style the wig that I got to go with my Elsa costume, but I don't have a wig head. So I found this pattern. It's available on Lynn McMaster's website. She is out of a portrait patterns and I will link all the information below. She has a pattern for how to make a fabric head form or wig form and that's what I'm going to work on today. I have this really pretty floral cotton duck that I just got at Walmart. I have this exact same fabric to make a bootstrap dress form out of. So with that, let's get started. The first step in the process was to print the pattern out on 8.5 by 14 paper and then cut it out. This is the headpiece and then the two side panel pieces which actually end up being the center of the head uh, get cut out and taped together. This line just shows where the two pieces get taped together. Once the pattern was all cut out of paper, it was time to cut it out of the fabric. I cut two pieces for each of the pattern pieces. And if you'll notice, the grain line runs kind of crossways diagonally on the patterns rather than vertically or horizontally like most patterns. The first step in the assembly process is to match one center piece to one side piece at the notches, which I did, and then I started pinning from the bottom towards the notches. I did that on the um, other end of the middle piece as well, and then I pinned between the notches as the last step. Once I had the first set of pieces pinned together, I repeated the process on the second set.
After pinning both pieces together, I sewed the seams and then I clipped the seams starting at a mark indicated on the pattern piece all the way around the curve of the head. The final step of the assembly process was to attach the two halves together. I did that by first marking the center of each half and pinning them together there and then starting at the bottom end and pinning towards the center. Once the two sides were completely pinned together, I sewed the seam. That seam also needed to be clipped from the same indicator mark on the paper pattern piece. Todd was really nice and used his jigsaw to cut the base for me out of a 1x6 that we had on hand. Um, I could have done it myself, but it would have taken me about four times as long. I then just ran some sanding paper across the edges just to make sure any sharp points were gone and smoothed out. Once the base was ready, it was time to stuff it. The instructions say to stuff it as tight as you possibly can, and I was shocked at how much polyfill I could actually get into the fabric head. As a side note, I just used a normal straight stitch when I sewed this together originally but the seams ended up popping so I took all the stuffing out and re-sewed the seams using a reinforced stitch.
When the head was sufficiently stuffed, I put a layer of hot glue on the fiber fill at the opening and held the wooden base down to it until it turned solid. base was sufficiently attached to the polyfill, I pushed down and then attached the edge of the base to the fabric of the head. Finally, I glued the loose edges of the fabric to the base of the board. So this is the finished foam head from the front. It's basically just three seams and then stuffing it as tight as you possibly can. I will say the first seams I did, I just used a regular straight stitch, but as soon as I started st stuffing the fabric head, it split a couple of the seams. So I took the foam that I had in there out and re-stitched all the seams with a reinforced stitch. So that's the front. This is what it looks like from the side. And this is what it looks like from the back. You will have noticed in the footage that I didn't use a staple gun to attach the fabric to the wood and that's because Todd's staple gun seems to have gone missing. So what I have done is I have temporarily hot glued it to the piece of wood. I'm going to eventually staple it and then I'm also going to mount the head onto something a little bit wider base so that it doesn't tip over as easily. And I have have my really super cheap Amazon not historically accurate wig. I'm gonna throw on it real quick just so you can see what that looks like. Well here it is once again with the wig on it and really crummy background but I wanted to eliminate some of the distractions in my windowsill. I was absolutely right that this is going to need some sort of base to make it a little bit sturdier. As soon as I put the wig on and started trying to comb it out and make it look a little bit nicer, I could not keep the head form upright. That will be what I do next, um, just to add a little bit of a base and some weight to it. This was a fun little project. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more content like this from me, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.